Hi YouTube, today I'm going to be talking about Mars, Trine, Pluto, and Sinistry. So Sinistry is when you take two people's birth charts together and put them together and you get a bunch of aspects that indicate the strengths and weaknesses in a relationship. Now, Mars and Pluto um, aspects and Sinistries are known to be one of the most dangerous aspects just because they are very con consuming, very passionate, and very intense, and very deep and transformative. But when you have a trine or sextile between them, it makes this intensity and these power struggles a little bit more easier to handle with. But either way, there's still going to be a lot of passion in the relationship. Now, Mars is a masculine planet. It is a the traditional masculine planet. It's, you know, women are for Venus, Mars are for men, you know that. So, And he's all about war. And he's very, um, he's about passion and he's about drive and he's about confrontation and assertion about getting what he wants. He's very direct and straightforward. Pluto is a planet of death, rebirth, and transformation. And the way Pluto goes about things, it's more secretive. They, the Pluto person might be the more secretive one, more, um, one that's kept in set, the one that keeps a little bit of their private life more private. Now, why these two are attracted to each other is because Mars is super independent, super straightforward, and super direct. And the Pluto person likes this. He sees it as a very masculine kind of figure, and the, the Pluto person is more full of pride. The Pluto person is like, no, like, you won't be the one to overcome me. I have to control you. You know, so that is the problem. This is the main problem between these two. Um, I'm saying, and I'm just going over Mars and Pluto, like, the aspect, and then I'll talk about the trine and how that works. So why these two are drawn together is because they're both so powerful, you know, and they're both more of a malefic planet, you know? And there's a lot of fighting and arguing that's known to be in this relationship. So it's like two strong people, two people that are used to being the dominant ones, you know? But now both of them want to control each other. You know, Pluto wants to have power over Mars, and Mars wants to have power over Pluto, but neither want to be controlled. Both want to be the dominant. So that's where the str power struggle plays in, and that's the hardest thing about this. So now let's talk about the trine. When it's trined, it makes the power struggles easy to deal with. Maybe one person can give in a little and let the other person be a little bit more dominant, or they can like pl play turns on who's the one that like takes the lead, you know? But when these two are together, it's almost as if nothing can hold them back. You know, these people are, they feel as if the relationship makes them stronger. They feel stronger as a couple than they do as an individual. You know, because they're both naturally strong, but when you put two strong people together and you put a trine, it's like, oh my God, we can conquer the world. You know, love conquers all. Like, love is a battlefield, but we are both on the same side. You know, um, there's extreme... The first thing about this, another reason why they are so drawn to each other is because they are... There's extreme sexual energies between them. They, this is kind of what draws them together in the first place. It's not, because you can't really see the personality until after they meet them. But they have this magnetic connection towards each other that is like, whoa, like it's mind-blowing. They're extremely attracted to each other. And the Mars person is more of the person that's like a little bit more dominant. And they, first of all, the Mars person flat out doesn't want to see the Pluto person with anybody else and the Mars person gets jealous and when the Mars person gets jealous they get mad and they will be like uh and they will like say something and then the Pluto person gets jealous but feels the need to make the Mars person jealous back actually there can be a little bit of power like manipulation between both of them but the manipulation generally stems from the Pluto person the Pluto person brings out all of those feelings that Mars naturally doesn't feel, which is like the jealousy, which is like the the feel. Pluto makes the Mars person believe that they are soulmates, that they are meant to be. Anywhere where Pluto is, it intensifies it, you know? So Mars is now uncovering all these feelings that he does not know how to express. 
because Mars is direct and Mars is straightforward, but Pluto is the opposite. I'm sorry, Pluto goes about what they want more secretly. They go about it in manipulation, you know? So Mars is trying to get power over Pluto just by being direct and as asserting himself. And this is where ang like Mars is known to be a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more angry. So that's why it can be a little bit more violent because he's feeling all these things with a Pluto person, but he doesn't necessarily know how to express it besides anger. And then the Pluto person like feels this way too. But the Pluto person is the one to play the more um, quieter side. The Pluto person will keep secrets. The Pluto person will hide how they feel. You know, and neither of them want to, they know, okay, low key, they both know how they feel about each other and they both know how the other person feels about them. But neither of them can really truly say how they feel about each other a lot of the times so like they won't drop the relationship until they know for sure and pluto won't let mars go pluto will keep kind of luring the mars person back because like mars is extremely attracted to the pluto person they will lure them back because pluto knows pluto's like knows the unconscious pluto can delve deep into the mars person and like just wants to uncover all of the Mars person's layers, you know? So the Mars person, they, that's the thing though. Pluto wants to uncover all of this and like wants this deep seek into the psyche. And the Mars is like, hold up. I don't need anyone doing this. I know how I, like, no, stop. Like whatever, <laughs> you know? But it's like they both know how they feel about each other. But when they like, they just have a hard time addressing it to each other's faces or being extremely clear or saying what's uncomfortable like you know a lot of times they will play along with the relationship and maybe that's not what they want maybe they want something that's more of a relationship than something that's more of like this intense um like arguing and fighting and just like not saying how we feel but having that passionate look in our eyes you know but when this happens, it's almost as if it dies out. But a lot of times it can regenerate and make the relationship deeper. You know, with a conjunction or with an opposition, you know, a lot of the arguments and stuff can lead to breaking up and like admitting the feelings can be very uncomfortable. But when the trine happens, when both of these admit their feelings and both of them are very honest and open and they they just are direct. The Pluto person needs to learn how to be more direct and the Mars person needs to learn how to be a little bit more compassionate and try to like read in between the lines. You know, that's the, that's, that's the give and take that they need to do here. But once that happens, it's not like a hate, like, oh, this is uncomfortable for me, like an opposition or a conjunction. This is more of a relief, like, oh my God. And it just deepens the relationship. And that's when the wheels start turning. And that's when they get, um, that's when the relationship becomes consuming and that's when they work they start to work well with each other these people can go through so much together and come out stronger you know nothing holds them back they're not afraid of challenges in fact both of them like challenges and both of them are very competitive so like there's a very competitiveness between them so it, it, just saying like when it comes to making each other jealous it's like who can make the other one more jealous you know kind of like that pluto always wins in that by the way um even though like the mars person doesn't show it pluto knows how to really push the buttons on the mars person and like get those feelings out they're very possessive over each other and at times it's an all or nothing kind of thing you know so if they see each other with like someone else or they give someone else like like a certain like stare or a certain hug they will get like so jealous over each other and they will be like that that's when they pick arguments n naturally it's when there's an uncertainty when there's a feeling of like oh my god like do you like someone else are you like seeing someone else there can be a little bit of superstition here if feelings aren't being communicating communication honesty and being truthful with one another is like the key factor on making this relationship work I'm just saying, you know, but like there's this source of regenerative energy, which helps you create and sustain an intensely possessive sexual union, you know? So like when you go through stuff, you guys argue and then you guys probably have like intense sex or whatever, and that just regenerates it, you know, and you feel passionate again, 
you know, and you're inspired by these challenges that you have to go through. You get consumed by it. You, this is this is the person that you always think about. And it's very hard to let each other go. And it's very hard to stop thinking about each other. And like once you get in this relationship, no offense, and I don't mean to scare you, but there's really no going back. You can't commit in this relationship and then decide you guys want to be friends because there's so much sexual attraction between each other that when you see each other, that's all you're going to be thinking about because the sex and the lust and the love and the passion for you guys, it's it's going to be hard to forget. And then you guys break up and then you guys decide you want to be friends. And then you have to see each other and that's all that's going through your mind is like all these passionate memories. You know, you're not going to really remember all the arguing. You're going to remember more of the loving and the passion. But it's a very intense, possessive, um, it's meant to be lived out. It's not, it, if you have this, live it out and experience these feelings that you probably, this is a, an experience that, um, it can be a very explosive relationship also, but I'm saying like, if you have this aspect with someone, live it out, be afraid to, don't be afraid to like, push each other's limits don't be afraid to challenge each other because this is how you guys grow you know don't make each other jealous for fun if there's no need to i mean seeing your partner get jealous it's like very attractive and stuff and i'm sure in this relationship it's like it's like oh you still like me like you know like when you make when the pluto person or the mars person makes the other one jealous it's like it's just a, it's like a reassurance they do this because they both know they don't want to see each other with anybody else but they make each other jealous because it's like they say they know how they feel about each other without saying anything. And then, you know, jealousy and possessiveness, it's a way of saying I love you without even having to say it, you know? So when they see the other person jealous, it's kind of like a reassurance to them. So if you have this aspect and your partner is trying to make you jealous or trying to make you angry or trying to really tick your buttons, you know, it's a way of him or her or she, I'm sorry, him or she, trying to figure out if you still like them, honestly, if they're doing it blatantly to your face, you know, but along with that being said, like, oh, what was I gonna say, oh, when you guys fight for something, and, you know, you guys are slashing words at each other, remember this, whatever person you are, if you're arguing, and that's all you guys get out of each other, just know that the other person cares about you because when you fight with each other, you're fighting for something that you love. You know, arguing in a relationship is good because you're arguing and you're fighting for something that you care about. Yeah, there might be mean words being transferred. And I'm not saying that's, that this is an excuse. You know, if you're the Pluto person, put the Mars person in their place. And if you're the Mars person and they're saying something mean to you and they're saying that some, saying that something that shouldn't be said, just like put them in their place also know how you guys should treat each other communicate about how you want the relationship to actually work because you don't want this to turn into that malefic relationship that arises in a conjunction and opposition because that can happen but you guys have the ability to communicate with each other be honest and open and then build that trust build that stability in that relationship but that passion and that fire keeps it going and it's a very really consuming aspect and I'm not saying that just because you have this aspect that you're meant to be together or that you're meant to be soulmates I'm not saying that so take what I say with a grain of salt you know but it's like both of you guys are gonna feel things that you've never felt with anybody else okay you both are extremely attracted to each other you're attracted to each other by your looks they could not even be the most attractive person and for some reason you're like i don't even know why i like them i don't know but i just do you know and you're attracted to each other's appearances you're attracted to each other's independence and pride and strongness and like if you guys just communicate that to each other and you guys just say what you truly want to say and Pluto, stop keeping secrets and stop lying to yourself or like stop trying to manipulate the Mars person because it's not going to work, you know? So like when you stop doing this, that is when you guys become that strong one person, you know, take two strong people, combine them together, you get one almighty person, okay? So... Being honest and open is really what you guys need to do to start overcoming challenges together instead of 
um, challenges by yourself. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh, another thing. There's a lot of change that's going to be happening in this relationship. And when it's finished, both of you guys are going to be two different people. Like, the person that you were before you got into the relationship is going to be a totally different person than you are what that than you were when you were before you got into it. There's a lot of transformations. There's a lot of transformation in the relationship, a lot of regenerative energies. You know, you guys can go through a lot and then find like you guys can go through a really low point in your lives and then hit a really high peak after that, you know? A lot of regenerative energies where you get back on your horses and you start fighting together and, and instead of against each other. But once that relationship ends, who you are after that is going to be totally different. And usually those qualities will be displayed by the Mars person. Your idea and your outlook on love is going to be completely different, you know? Um, so yeah, that was it for my Mars trying Pluto in Sinistry. I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to leave any comments regarding if I left anything out, um, or any constructive criticism that you might have. Um, I'll see you guys later. Bye.